Hi, I'm Dean Olive and I'm the RuneScape Content Development Manager. So we're here today at Peckford and Castle to talk about RuneScape 3. What's it like for you, uh, having worked on a game that's full of medieval lore, to be standing inside of a castle, even though technically it's not medieval? Absolutely amazing and really exciting. I got giddy and I was quite a fanboy when I got here. How do you guys uh, use the medieval history that surrounds Cambridge uh, when you're creating content for this game? Uh, vastly, I mean, you can see it in the architecture in some of our buildings that the graphics designers do, some of the abbeys that you can see in there. You, you can absorb some of Cambridge from around the surrounding areas in the game. So. As a developer, how do you work with the fans over the years in uh, deciding what content's going to go in the game? Um, more closely than I've ever worked with um, the players of any other product before. Um, day in, day out, we'll be speaking to whether it's myself, the development, the community team, find out what the players are after, what makes them tick, what they don't like, and we can make rapid changes. Whether it be five minutes or five hours, we can make changes that quick. So. Can you talk specifically about the players' uh, feedback and how it's influenced RuneScape 3? Um, yeah, sure. It's, um, we're really looking to um, give them more choice. I mean, they're always asking for things like a, a toggle option, um, which was for graphics, whether they could turn something on or off. Now, what we've done, we've taken that to the next level, and they can redefine their entire playing canvas. They can do this in real time and basically change any element of the screen that they don't like or don't want to see, want to make bigger. And like I say, they don't need to pause the gameplay like other products do. And when it comes to uh, creativity, in addition to being able to customize the UI and the characters, can you talk a little bit about what's new when it comes to building your own houses? Um, yeah, I mean, um, that's really cool. You currently have a, a player-owned house system in the game. I mean, the design team, part of RS3, well, going, going forward, will um, take that to even a new height, should we say. Well, can you just give us a, a sense of what what's new when it comes to that for RuneScape 3? Um, for the POH aspect, not so much, because our players don't know anything about that at the moment, and, and that's one we're really keeping for, for their surprise. It's their adventure, after all. They're going to... They're going to define what Gillenor becomes and what RuneScape becomes. We are just going to frame it and, and allow them to be the directors. What are the challenges when it comes to giving so much power to the player in, in terms of having the content there for them? It, it is very challenging. Um, what the design team didn't want to do is what, what I consider a, a cheap illusion of choice. They'll give them two options and now A, B, they'll end up at C. Um, what we're trying to do is govern a rule set for the law and for the design so that no matter what the actions and the, the outcomes can be so vastly different, we, we've got it covered. Can you just give us a sense of how much of the game story or how much of the game direction will be directed by the player versus content that, that is there for kind of everyone? Um, all the content's there for everyone. I mean, the sixth age is the new age to start playing RuneScape. Um, even if you've missed out on the last 10 years, you'll be fine to start day one. From the world wakes, the death of Guffix, going forward, your, every action you do will be part of uh, shaping the future of RuneScape. And when it comes to this game, can you also give us a sense of how different people play it different ways? Yeah, that, that's one of our big challenges and what I'm heavily involved with is getting the right balance for the right type of gamer. I mean, you have your four dominant classes, whether it's conflict, your social, your a narrative law driven player, um, or, or, or just the skiller, the person who wants to craft objects. So we try and get that balance. There's many, many other subcategories, but each player is important to us. When it comes to those four categories, though, talk a little bit about, for example, the social aspect. How are you? Uh, what are you offering for them in RuneScape 3? The social element, I mean, um, I, I've been trying to find other products that do this, but I mean, just the chat channels, we will allow you to drag, dock, split them, add new chat channels, add new options. Um, we're also going to give the sort of the share element to the social um, aspect. So when they create these new interfaces, ultimately, and, and, and when we get there, they'll be able to share them, customize them, and get a, an, another meta game within our community. When it comes to the skill players, what is there? Oh, that, that's where it really kicks off for them. The skilled players are going to be able to really make power interfaces if they want, so they can maximise efficiency. If they just want to look at it as well, they can, they can have a basic one. It is literally up to the player. You can do so many different things with this, whether you want it as power play, whether you want it as casual play, or whether you just want to absorb um, the beautiful environments, the beautiful sounds that um, you see on your adventure. And the story will be the interactive element that we've just discussed uh, previously. Yeah, the story is only one element of the interaction. Uh, we, we, we want every level. You'll hear the, the guys say about the audio as well. There's the interactions on every level. So whether it's picking up some um, ethereal stone off the floor to killing the, the biggest monster you've ever seen, that could have an effect on the game world and a, and a lasting effect on the game world. I think the key thing we're trying to do is um, sort of... Uh, 
rekindle or redefine the relationship between the gamer and their game. Can you talk a little about what's there for conflict when it comes to RuneScape 3? Yeah, RuneScape 3, uh, the conflict's going to be off the chart. I mean, we've done some big things. We've done instance battles. I mean, this is, you can tell, this is what I'm really excited about. I love combat. Um, there's going to be some vast battles, game-changing battles. You're going to have to pick a side, and you're going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other side, and this is on a global scale. What has HTML5 and that technology opened up for you guys when it comes to creating content? Um, HTML5 has opened up basically, I think it puts us on par. I mean, it surpasses anything you'll see in the browser space that offers that much diversity, that much content, and, and such high fidelity graphics. I mean, we've just got uh, new dynamic lighting, dynamic shadows, softer shadows. We've got uh, an enriching color palette as well so that we can actually do justice to um, the v vast uh, environments that we've created within Gilliland. And skies for the first time? Yeah, skyboxes are all good. Yeah, we get to look up as well, so really excited.